for all my frustrations with YouTube and people know I complain about the algorithm all the time and I complain about demonetization and the rest of it, the fact is they're giving us the pipes to, to do what we do. It doesn't mean it can't be better. It doesn't mean we shouldn't push them when, we, when they want to be pushed. It doesn't mean that there will be other competition and other products and the rest of it. But yes, the fact that this can all happen is, is pretty awesome. And I got to tell you, when I was in Australia with Jordan Peterson and we did uh, about eight shows in Australia and then we were going to come back to Australia, but, but things got a little screwy. Um, I freaking loved the Australian audiences. You guys remind me more than any other country that we went to, even more than the UK and Canada, of the American ethos. Like there is like a, a spirit of individualism in Australia and a spirit of fun and political incorrectness. The, the crowds were amazing, the laughs. I mean, you know this from stand-up. You know when a crowd is just juiced and ready to go. And all of the crowds in Australia were like, where they were yelling and I would, I do a lot of crowd work, so I was messing around with people and they were fun versus you go, do a lot of the stuff in the rest of Europe and they sort of treat it as a stage show. Like you perform, we laugh, you perform, we laugh. Like there's a contract. But Australia had much more of a sort of what I, what I think of as like a New York stand-up feel that I, that I really love. And one night, Jordan Peterson and I went to an open mic. We thought we were going to a burlesque show. It ended up being an open mic in Melbourne. There were like eight people in there. You know what those open mics are like. I mean, it was just... An they absolute it. horrible. Just yeah, and and for guys like us that have lived through it, it's particularly painful, right? So Jordan's watching it as an outsider, and he can sort of appreciate the struggle and you know all the weirdness. But for me, it's like I live that life, so it's very hard for me to watch it, as I'm sure it would be for you. And we watched, you know, we saw a couple guys that were decent or one or two jokes, but the whole thing was pretty painful. But what was really funny is that every single comic there recognized Jordan, and then me. So they basically were just tailoring their acts in front of eight people to Jordan Peterson. So they were basically using it as therapy sessions with Jordan. And I was like, you, you can't make this up. We're at a, bur a burlesque show across the world. And I got stand-up comics going up one at a time to be analyzed by the leading intellectual <laughs> in the world. It's just amazing. To tour uh, with uh, Jordan Peterson must have been a very strange Sorry. affair not only to see him as and become his friend but to see his rise during that time and i i've been listening to dr peterson since his first time on joe rogan's podcast and prior to that when he was speaking out against uh the speech issues that were happening in uh, the universities in canada there and i met him at brisbane airport and i was in the lounge there and i saw him and and i'm i'm someone who grew up around professional sport uh, my father played and I met a lot of famous people through that who were famous in Australia. So I'm pretty good with not freaking out and going full, you know, just <laughs> mad fangirl. And I yeah. saw Jordan Peterson and I freaked out. I didn't know what to say to him. I just said, thank you. And then smiled politely and then just, just panicked the entire time. I walked away. I nearly spewed. It was horrible. But he seems <laughs> like a very nice guy. I saw a lot of versions of that, so don't feel bad. I mean, I saw tons, you know, we traveled, we did about 120 stops in about 20 countries in a year. So it was, it was pretty intense. The last shows that we did together were the Australia shows. He ended up going to New Zealand and a few more, but I, I had some commitments back here in the States. But the, the absolute last show we did was uh, the Sydney Opera House, which was wow. just, just incredible. It was a matinee show, the only matinee show we did the entire tour. It was a beautiful day in Sydney. You, you know what the, what the pier there is like. The energy out there, we walked. We took a walk on the pier about an hour before the show. And, you know, he's, he's in a suit and it's a beautiful warm day in Sydney. And just hundreds of people just following us behind, just trying to shake his hand, take a picture. But I saw many, many people that would go completely tongue-tied. People literally could not remember their name. And, and I got to tell you, Jordan, Jordan treated Every single person the same. What I actually remember about that day most specifically was, you know, Jordan does that carnivore diet that I'm sure you're going to talk to Michaela about. So he, he was only eating red meat. And we had to leave the theater. The reason we were walking be right before the show was because we had to go get a steak for him. So we sat down in a restaurant on the pier there, a steak joint. And there were tons of fans that were having lunch there that were on the way to the show. And the security guard with us said, you know what, let me make sure that nobody comes up to us because, you know, you, you have to have your head on right. This is a big show. It's, you know, you need to eat. And Jordan said, no, no, if anyone wants to say hi, if anyone wants to take a picture, I'll do it. And this was after, I mean, it was literally like our 120th show, our 20 some odd countries in. 
And it was like, he never let anyone down. I did not see it happen once. And he, you know, kids would come up to him, adults, people would be crying. And he just, it, it's such a beautiful thing because what the guy did is what he, he preached in that book that I have right over there, which was he set his room in order and then tried to fix the world. And I saw him do it. And, and I should just add, it doesn't make him perfect. He obviously has had some struggles since and he's getting better. I, I can promise you that. I saw him a couple months ago. It doesn't mean he's perfect. And I think that's where people get a little confused. They, they think, oh, you wrote something amazing. You helped all these people. You have to be a perfect human. But none of us are perfect. And, uh, you know, he'll, he'll be back in better than ever. And, I, and we need him. You know, it's like this Corona thing. There's so much weirdness in the world. We need the guy.